Welcome back everyone to Ted Talk Stamps. I am Ted, the talking stamp collector. Now every once in a while I get a comment in the uh, comments section of the videos wanting to take a look inside my collection. So I thought, well, instead of having an episode where I just go page by page, show you everything I've got, that's kind of boring. I'm going to start a series of uh, episodes where I just highlight a, a, a small part, tell you what's going on. And I call this series, Tetsky's Treasures. And I'm starting off with this one. This is uh, mail that I got just this past week from Poland, from the Wadna Znaczki channel run by Maciej. And uh, he's helping me find some Polish stamps to acquire for my collection. So I uh, received them this past week. And it was inside this, this cover, Frank with a nice souvenir sheet from the 2020 Expo in Dubai. So what did I get inside to add to my collection? Just small accumulation of stamps, starting with this Souvenir sheet for Czesław Swania's 100th birthday. Now you may uh, be aware of the other sheets that look identical to this by Greenland, Denmark, and Sweden. And uh, I was still lacking the Polish version, so I finally got that one. Next, I got this 1982 set featuring Ignaz Lukasiewicz who, as you may recall from a previous episode of mine, during my Swap and Research Challenge, I did a profile of Lukashevitz, who invented the kerosene lamp. And this set shows some various kerosene lamps. Very nice looking items. And I got this set from 1999 which depicts various Polish cultural buildings located in foreign countries. There's the Polish Museum in Switzerland, the Mary and Fathers Museum in the United Kingdom, the Polish History and Literary Society Library in Paris, and the Polish Institute and Sikorsky Museum in London. An attractive set that will appeal to those who collect architecture on stamps, Next came this one, celebrating the bicentennial of the French Revolution. It was issued in 1989 in conjunction with the Paris Philatelic Exhibition in France. So that is the exhibition label on the left. It's a non-postal label, along with what the Scott Catalog labels, a lady in a Frisian cap, which I'm pretty sure that's supposed to represent Marianne, but who am I? Another stamp from just earlier this year. There's a lot of stamps depicting solidarity with uh, Ukraine being issued by various countries. And this is one from Poland, showing two hands clasped, each in the colors of their respective countries. Underneath the Polish hand, it's inscribed, Jesteśmy z Wami, which means we are with you. This next stamp I really like because it represents a subject that is very underrepresented in stamp commemorations. And this is Stanislav Lem. Now, if you said, who is Stanislav Lem? Then the correct answer is, he's probably the most famous science fiction writer that you've never heard of. In fact, this is why I like the stamp goes with my books. I said Stanislav Lem is a renowned author. Very smart, very, in fact, he wrote a lot of, um, in fact, he wrote a lot of nonfiction items too. He's, he wrote a lot of philosophical stuff about society and the future and such. He wrote about 15 novels, including uh, Tales of Perks the Pilot, 
Memoirs found in a bathtub, The Invincible, Eden, Solaris, which was made into a movie twice, I believe. I haven't seen either. And The Siberiad. Coming over and grabbing my topical album. I don't have pages arranged yet. I like to wait till I get a few stamps and then be able to lay out the stamps. But here is my Polish authors section and I'll just stick Stan in there for now. And it looks like I'm ready to make a page or two for my Polish authors. And last but not least, from this shipment comes Ludwig van Beethoven. This stamp was issued in the year 2020 on the occasion of Ludwig's 200th birthday. Now I do have pages made up for my classical stamps. Here's the beginning of Beethoven. I just uh, put the stamps in at random as I get them. I'm not worried about any kind of symmetry or a chronological order or anything. Now there's a space. Looks like this one will fit. But let me just show you the rest of them. There's a few more. Here's another one from this 250th. This one is a Austria's regular issued stamp. This one was just a special black print, which is, as the name implies, it's just a, it's a souvenir issue printed in a monochrome black. This set from Fujira including one showing the bass strings of the piano on the wrong side, it should be on the left. And then this one from Spain, also issued for the 250th, a real live phonograph playing record. And if you guessed that it probably plays Beethoven's Fifth Symphony, you win the grand prize. So let's go back to this page. I've got a stamp mount cut that I'll stick in there. And then while I've got it open, I'll show you some of the other pages. We saw this one already. There's Hector Berlioz from a set from Monaco. This one's from France. This is Monaco showing a, a bust and these nine are scenes from his opera The Damnation of Faust. And there's Frederick Chopin in a Chinese issue that was engraved by Martin Merck. Franz Josef Haydn, another Chinese Merck stamp. Franz Liszt, guess who? Martin Merck. Mahler. Merck. Everybody else? Oh yes, old Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart. Ah, China, Merck. Wolfie, Wolfie. Actually, his nickname was Wolferl. Here's a souvenir sheet from Mozambique where Mozart was inscribed Ludwig van Beethoven. That's Beethoven there. Schubert, China, Merck.
All right, and then this one was from Austria in 1969 for the Vienna State Opera, 100 years. And that's it. So that's a quick glimpse into a small part of my collection. As you can see, I'm way behind in making album pages. I think I'm going to make that a priority over the next week or so. Get some pages made and some stamps mounted. So stick around and see what I pull out next from Tetsky's Treasures. Now to end this program, I do have another viewer top 10 list. This one comes from Eric Vildeboer from the Netherlands. And he's given me his top 10 stamps of the Netherlands, starting with this one. This one was issued January 3rd, 1989, for the privatization of the PTT, which is now uh, post-NL, post-Netherlands. And Eric finds the design interesting with the colors and size and shape. Next comes number nine, a Dutch windmill set issued 17 June 2013. And Eric says, I love this set because of the rainbow colors of the stamps, how they look together, and the nice drawings of the windmills. At number eight comes one of the series of summer stamps issued by the Netherlands. There were several issues of summer stamps with flowers on them. But his favorite is this pinkish red one from this set from 1953. At number seven comes this one honoring... 50 years of the Dutch state mines. And Eric just thinks this one looks pretty neat. He says it's also a bit funny historically because the mines were all closed in the 60s and the 70s, not long after the stamp was issued. At number six comes this set. It's a charity issue for aiding the old sailors' homes. And Eric likes in particular the one with the ship and an orange sun right behind it. At number five, is a children's stamp issue, issued for uh, children's welfare. And it's showing children wearing traditional costumes. And Eric really likes these, showing off traditional clothing. They're pretty neat. He says his favorite one is probably the one showing the traditional clothing of Markin. At number four, from 1906, another charity issue on tuberculosis prevention. Eric says this stamp is really busy looking which is actually why he really likes it. At number three from 1949, guess what? Another charity issue or semi-postal set issued for the Dutch Red Cross. And Eric likes the watercolor-like look to the images. His favorite being the yellow and blue one. At number two comes another set of summer stamps. Eric says, I love the picturesque feel that these images have. I love the whole set, but my favorite one is the one with the hikers. And at number one comes another children's issue, although these are three issues from the years 1925, 1926, and 1927, depicting the coats of arms of the 11 provinces of the Netherlands. And if you're thinking, Ted, aren't there 12 Netherlands provinces? That is correct, but the 12th one wasn't born until 1986. 60 years after the last set was issued. So that does it for another episode of Ted Talk Stamps. I hope you enjoyed this little peek into my collection and into Eric's top 10 list. Hope you'll join me again next time. And until then, happy stamping.